Boy, times sure have changed, but today I'm going to show you how you turn this crazy contraption on. So stick around. To the channel. If you're new here, my name is Matt Riggins. If you're a pilot, if you're a fellow simmer, or you're an aviation enthusiast, consider subscribing to the channel and hit that notification bell too so you can get updates on all future videos. My 737 simulator runs off of six PCs, three projectors, four screens, and a lot of electricity. So today I'm going to walk you around the process of how I turn this thing on. You may have noticed that I've got an LED strip up here. This is a battery powered LED strip. Just turn it on, got some blue lights. That's the first step. The second step is you gotta set the mood lighting. Set the simulator for flight. There we go. Now we're feeling a little bit more flight simmy. And that is how I normally run the lighting externally for the simulator when I'm flying. For the purposes of this video, I'm leaving the lights to white. All right, that first thing about electricity. This thing runs off three power strips on two separate circuits. So let me get them turned on. And through the power of a jump cut, they are now on. So the first thing I gotta do is I gotta get the server PC turned on. It's very dark in here. Uh, there's not much I can do about that, but the PC is right in front of me and that's what the mixer is sitting on top of. So I'm gonna turn on that computer. I'm going to turn on, that's the CDU PC. I'm going to go ahead and turn on this one here. All right, that one's on. And then we're going to reach in and turn on the SIM PC as well. Last but not least is I got to get the projectors on. So I have the remote Velcroed up here. And what I do is I simply just reach up and you can see them up there. And I just turn them on. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the MIP, the overhead and the glare. And there's our server PC right there. So I have a uh, USB KVM uh, with a button right under here that allows me to switch between all four of the main computers. The fifth computer, of course, is the uh, tablet. And then the sixth one is the one back in the cargo bay there that uh, I use, that's the Surface Book. Uh, Pro 2. I've got a little folder here called SIM and on each computer um, Very important. I have two batch files uh, one called restart and one called shutdown because there are instances especially on the visuals PC once the warping is going and everything um, it, it just you don't have access to your traditional taskbar like you're used to so um, First thing I have to start up on this computer over here is the wide client. So I get the wide client going. Then I start the SIM avionics server. All the computers are connected to their own router that's uh, here in the simulator. And that router has its own subnet that's unique uh, and uh, um, not the same as my main router for my internet service. So the server's up and running, that's a SIM avionics server. Gonna go ahead and minimize it. And then I start up the MCP software from SIM A. That looks like it's connected, okay. Now that does not yet mean that the MCP is ready to go. This is just the software interface. The hardware interface is on the main PC. Bring up the overhead here as well. So there's the overhead. And we'll pull that down a little bit. Great. And then we can do the uh, MFD. Okay, the MFD is there. And then I can launch the electronic checklist by Thomas Richter. Now that it's like that, that means it's on the MFD. And if I hit that button, it'll bring the checklist back. 
and typically that's where I leave it at. Now I click my little button under here for the KVM and I should be now on the CDU computer over here. There I am. So I have a wide, uh, the wide client uh, and the TCP IP client already auto launches. So the only thing I have to start here is just the CDU software. So we get that up and running. Okay. And of course the reason it's off, it's clicking there because that's kind of its self-test sort of thing. Um, the reason it's off, of course, is because I don't have, uh, everything is cold and dark at the moment. Okay. Next, I got to flip over to the MIP computer. Okay. So this one auto starts everything because it's pretty easy. So you can see those are all coming on there and then they'll turn off because again, the computers or the, the simulator, quote unquote, is not running yet. And then I flip over to the main PC out there and uh, you can see here how the screens are overlapped and you can see how like the arrow disappears and then it shows up again, right? That's just from that overlapping uh, because there is that distance of right there, that space of overlapping between the projectors. So uh yeah i'm uh i've always had a hard time dealing with that kind of stuff here on the main computer because the desktop warping cannot be enabled by fly elise if the window warping for p3d is enabled so we start the p3d warping software and that's coming up over there all right and I apologize for any of the video quality issues going on here. It's just the refresh rate of the projectors to the GoPro. And this is why I'm not using GoPros uh, to film inside the cockpit. Um, so then we start the IOC modules and that will get the radios there up and running. Then we start the sysboard interface. And this is the software that makes the PC talk to the sysboards by Flight Deck Solutions. I'm using sysboards for the MIP and for the overhead as well. Then we bring up the semi-avionic sound module. Now I've got the external speakers unplugged right now. Uh, so you're not gonna hear any sound. So that's come up, there it is. The next thing is I gotta open up the um, EFB server. Next thing I have to do is I have to fire up the tablet over here. Okay, then I start the EFB client here. I primarily use the EFB for the moving map functionality. Um, it helps a lot with whenever you're uh, taxiing on an airport, you can see exactly where all the taxiways are. So whenever you're giving uh, those taxi instructions, um, it's easy to follow and make sure that you stay on path. Obviously it has a lot of functionality. <clears throat> you can uh, change the radios and you can do a lot of other things, but I primarily use it for moving map. And then of course the last thing to do right now uh, is just to start P3D. So as you can see, we're running the Sim Avionics 737. This is their own aircraft config file. So I have uh, numbers in there for weight and things like that. Um, and then I would just go down to the flight planner and either set up a flight or load my flight. Uh, everything else is pretty much good. We're just again coming out of KLAX. So we hit okay and let's get loaded up here. Something to note uh, while it's loading the terrain data is you can see the reflections of the interior cockpit lights on the inside of the glass. It's very cool. We are ready to fly. We're just gonna go through transfer bus and we're gonna start the APU there. For those that don't know what an APU is, it's the auxiliary power unit. It's basically like a small jet engine. It's the very back of the aircraft has its own little exhaust port that usually sticks out the back and it's a mini turbine and it spins up and it generates electricity uh, before you actually start the engine. So if we switch over and put go on our APU, then now we've got <clears throat> power. Uh, at this point, we could then go ahead and start going through turning our pumps on. We get our uh, engines turned on and uh, then we could actually get the engine started. So the SIM is up and running. We could now go into the FMC. Uh, as well and we could start setting up um, the CDE with all of our uh, waypoints and um, our departure arrival and get all of our information. Uh, if we go back to menu we also have some sim options here and uh, on the sim itself we can do things like load payload. Obviously we could start or pause the simulator. Uh, we can do some stuff with the APU. We can do fuel auto brake. Uh, we can initiate a pushback here. 
um, although uh, I'm going to be using software for that sort of thing. So uh, that's uh, some of the stuff you can do. You can set the doors, you can set your position, the rate, uh, you can set up, uh, you can do your weather stuff, uh, and then uh, reset the view and that sort of thing. So there's a lot of simulator things you can do that's kind of fun uh, in there as well. Uh, but if you go back to the flight management computer, you can begin to do your position initialization and go through all that kind of stuff and get going. What do we do when we want to turn this thing off? Inside of the Sim Avionics server, there's this little red area here. There's a big X. And if you click the big X and you say, yes, okay, boom, it'll shut all the computers down that are connected to the network. So it's closing down the server, it's closing down the CDU computer, the MIP screen computer, and the main computer as well. And then at that point, then I'm simply just going to turn off the MIP lighting, the glare, the overhead, and the glare. And before I do anything else, you can see that the projectors are still on because those projectors have a shutdown process of their own. We come over, shut the door, turn off the upper lighting, switch off the main power, and that's it. All right, 73 Sim Crew, that's how I turn on my 737 simulator. If you like the video, if you like my channel, make sure to hit that subscribe button and that notification bell so you get updates on all future videos. Again, thanks for watching, everyone. I'm Matt Riggins, Blue Sky.